Um, okay, Mandy's running late. She sent me a text. So we're, we're going to go ahead and get in our first posture. So yin, different than, so Pam and Catherine come to a lot of this low flow classes um, that I do. So yin is different. We focus on meridian lines, which is like similar to Chinese medicine, acupuncture, right? So today we're focusing on the meridian organ pair of heart, small intestine. So heart openers and things like that. And the one thing I am adding that's not specific to those meridian lines is we're going to do one hip opener just because we're all women and we store a lot of emotional energy in our hips. So we'll do one hip opener. So really you only do eight, maybe nine postures the whole practice. Now one posture might be held for a while. So let's pretend I'm here for five minutes. Then I'm gonna find an integration posture and I'll cue that for y'all and give you options so you don't feel like, oh, I have to do. I, there are multiple ways to get into these postures and also multiple ways to integrate out of the postures. So there's a concept that you might be familiar with called creep. So after you come out of a posture, there's still a lot of work happening, right? And in Chinese medicine, they would say, oh, well, your chi is flowing too. Your chi is finding new places to go. And that's why acupuncture works for some people because it's moving that energy to where it needs to go. So you have a deficiency or you have an overabundance and even you can have rebellious chi. And then when we breathe, so we're born with chi, we're born with energy prenatal. And then as, um, and then we manipulate our chi by all the movement that we do. So running, sitting, whatever it is. But we really actively change it through acupuncture, yoga, eating, and breathing. Okay, so those are the, like, that's kind of a short summary on yin and how we manipulate it. So the breath is gonna be really important because that's a way you take in energy energy. So as you're in these postures, it's important to breathe because you're changing where it goes. So it's going to pool when we're in the posture. It's going to stay stagnant. That's why the integration posture is so important. We'll stay there a while and you might be like, well, I'm ready to move, but we need to stay there a little bit to make sure that the energy has really found a new balance and then we can move on to the next place. Sound good? I know y'all are on Oh, good, Corinne, you're on video. I wasn't sure if you were coming live or if you were on video. I'm glad you're on. Um, okay, so we're gonna start in child's posture, but you're welcome to also take tadpole. So child's posture is going to be wide knees with your hands, your arms up front, in front of you, head towards the floor. So if your bottom has a little space, this is where your pillow or your blanket might be nice to find some comfort there. So in yin, unlike restorative, and then tadpoles knees together and arms on either side, if that's And you could really find one or more of those. So in yin, we're okay with using gravity. We're okay with tension. In restorative yoga, which we'll have a practice next Sunday night, just on Zoom. That one's just exclusively on Zoom. Um, restorative, we want the absence of tension because we're trying to restore and heal. So it's really good for people with injuries and things like that, or if you're sick. Um, yin though, we are really active. Okay, so this is a really active practice where we're engaging certain areas, not necessarily muscle groups, but joints. We're getting into fascia, tendons, bones even. Okay, so less about the muscles, although you're gonna have to engage a few muscles, right? So like, get in the posture. When you get there though, you can start to let yourself go. So before I start the music, I'm gonna pray for us. Lord, thank you for the space, for yoga in your name, to breathe, 
Genesis 2, 7, you breathe life into us and we get to pray as we inhale and exhale, even if we don't have words, Lord. God, we praise you for this time for Advent, for your son, for the many blessings that we have, some that we don't even recognize. Lord, let this be a time that we can listen, that we can meditate on your word, and we can ponder the goodness of your character and who you are. I pray that in this practice, I will get so small so you can get so big and be on your right throne, Lord, and that we can all see you in our own way as you reveal it to us. And as we sit quiet with the Holy Spirit inside of us, we praise you and we love you in Jesus' name. So you are beginning to notice breath here. Beginning to inhale, maybe find a little time in the inhale and find a little time to pause at the top of the inhale. I can fully and pause at the end of your exhale. As you inhale, you might envision air coming through the body, down through to the sacral region. Exhale, bringing the air back up through the heart and out the nose, in through the nose, out through the nose. So we use a warming Ujjayi breath for most of this practice because it's a cool practice. It's not meant to be warm. Yin is cool. Um, uh, devoted yins to do the practice usually in the morning or before they've warmed up. And so that's why we're at 11 a.m. You've probably not done a lot of activity yet. And so beginning to hear your breath, inhale, and exhale. When you're ready, inhale, you're going to take your right arm and just thread it underneath your left. So your hips are going to come up a little bit. Your right arm is going to come to the earth. The left arm is going to stay in front of you. And then the hips are going to settle back down, bottom back towards the heels here. Heart and then chest and lines run through the arms. And a lot of stimulation. While we're here, we're going to begin the Lexia Divina meditation. So this is one that was created by, um, if I said Benedictine, it's probably Augustine monks. Um, some of the monks a long time ago. And uh, I think it's just a great one for staying in scripture. 
And really, this meditation is about just pondering the scripture. There's the first reading is just a reading, let's yeah, just hearing it. And I'll read it about five times during our practice today. And you'll have time to maybe develop a breath prayer. So it might be a contemplative practice where you're inhaling a word that's catching you. It might be more at a certain point uh, revelatory. You might even choose to have a response. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Mind wanders. The breath is there to anchor you. In through the nose, lengthening breath out through the nose if it's available. you're ready, we'll integrate, come back through center, child's posture, or tackle. So child's posture is the knees are wide, arms outstretched. Or tackle is knees toward one another, arms to either side. ready, you can lift your hips and slide the left arm threading underneath the right and then lower the hips back toward the heels. Thank 
center, find that integration place, child's posture or tadpole. a tabletop posture, knees underneath your hips, hands underneath shoulders, and find a few cow and cat breaths. So you can even close your eyes here, inhale through the nose, cow, belly is loose, exhale, navel comes in and up, head is heavy, and breath can come out the mouth. You are breath speed, right? So however slow or quickly as you would like to find these. So we're saying hello to our spine. Come back to a flat back and begin to walk your hands out to the front of a mat and make, kind of make them a little bit off the mat and bring the heart towards a melting heart. So it might be chin, it might be chest, it might be forehead coming to the earth here. Lifting through the hips. Inhale. And then 
exhale, begin to plant your elbows, pull your chest forward. We're coming in the Sphinx. Press the legs behind you. Now, as the legs settle in, you get to let go of them. Okay, so the feet might even flop. We're not engaging the muscles in our legs for this posture. So our arms are working. So sometimes this can get a little tricky for people so they wanna grab their opposite elbows, that's an option. If it gets to be a little much, grab your bolster and put it underneath. So for Catherine and Pam, it would be maybe putting a blanket underneath or a pillow underneath your elbows. If your neck begins to bother you, you can let it gently drift down. Just bring a block and the forehead can come rest on the block. Now let the, uh, the shoulders, if they're trying to get into the posture for you, let them just roll back and down. They have a tendency to want to come up toward the ears and they're just not needed. This is a back bend. If it gets to be a little intense, you can move that bolster underneath your pelvic lower abdomen region. And that'll take a little bit of the back bend out of the posture and then it becomes a little more settling to stay in it for a period of time. Returning to breath, through jaggy breath in through the nose. Now through the nose. Isaiah 43, 1, B. Fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have summoned you. By name, you are mine. You feel like your heart is collapsing, just pressing chest forward, shoulders back, and belly is disengaged here. Okay, so this is like Thanksgiving, right? You're unbuttoning the pants, you're letting the belly hang. That's what we want here. It's hard for women sometimes, it's hard for me, but you really, that's what's needed in this posture to help you stay here a while. That's how the props can help you too. When you're ready, 
you begin to walk your arms out in front of you, come to your belly. My bolster. Bring your hands together and bring them to the earth. So you're just going to have them just like this. So, this is a lying down prayer posture. Bring your third eye to the earth. Integrating here from the back bend. side of your ribs just below your chest. Leave your knees on the floor. Begin to press up. It's like a little push up, but just with the knees. Tuck your toes. Bring your knees toward one another. Sit back on your feet. So you could take bolster blanket and put it underneath your heels and bottom right here too if you have some space. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, cactus. Little yawn in our yin. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, cactus. Inhale. Exhale. So if you haven't developed maybe a word for your breath prayer and you're maybe needing that to center you today, we on Tuesday did Holy Spirit, and I just love it. So just inhale, Holy, and exhale, Spirit. When you're ready, bring those hands in front of you. Make sure your toes are on your mat and just tap your toes out. Then come to a seat, and we're going to we're going to do a couple of seated postures here. So bring your right foot in to begin. The left leg is going to be out, and just settle in. So really, kind of press through both sit bones. Give yourself lots of. Do you need a blanket, or maybe yeah? Anybody else? Mandy, do you need a blanket? Yeah. So this is one where you will use your block in your bolster too. So just be ready to grab one of those. So this is heart melting toward the earth. So we're going to inhale facing forward. And then exhale, twist a little bit like we're going to look at our foot and look at our leg. Okay. So Remember, gravity can be part of your practice. Props can be part of your practice. You do want tension. Okay, I'm looking at my foot, my left foot. It doesn't have to be part of it. No, it gets to go one. So, bolster might be on your leg. Bolster might be next to your leg. So if you're a little to the side of your leg, that's okay. Or if you bring it here and you're going a little bit more that way, it's a little more difficult. Also blocks. So blocks can be used to make bridges or blocks can be used here. Or sometimes I know I see people do this and that works for them too, you know. And then just inhale, exhale, come toward your prop. And know that you, that's not your end goal, right? So 
we inhale, we exhale. We take our time because we're there a long time. So there's really no rush in getting to the final destination. And then as you get there, wherever there is, and there might change, let your bottom, your sits bones sink back into the earth. So we don't want them lifting, even if that means, oh, I have to come out of the posture a little bit, that's okay. And even if you're just hanging here, and this might just be a place for you to put your hands and breathe. yourself to sink. Inhale might bring you out a tad. Exhale might take you a little lower towards that resting place. Hands can just be limp. Shoulders can press back and down. And then head can be heavy, which is why the block can be really nice here for the neck. summoned you by name. You are mine. Give us a moment to integrate just fully up, right? Breath is important here. Bring your right hand to the right of your right hip, maybe a little bit behind you. Inhale, this left arm is gonna come up and you're gonna lift your hips. So we kind of feel like we're sinking into the earth when we get into some of these postures. So just lifting up. And then when you are ready, you just lower back down slowly to the earth. And then we're gonna change legs. So just press your right leg out, left leg will come in. And give yourself a minute again to sink down into the sit bones. It's different on each side. This one's one where it gets a little bit more apparent that we're just not symmetrical. Oh, there's the foot. Okay, so I get to let go of that. I get to let go of everything. So I want my patella to move. I want a little bend here, right? I don't want to walk out. And so that, that helps. So then say, how am I going to set up for this side? Inhale, exhale, fold. So because we don't have the vinyasa practice before yin, and a lot of times in our vinyasa, we'll do some stretches right at the end while we're warmed up. So we're 
really using our muscles to find length. Here, we're not. They're part of it, but they're much less apart. And this is more of a joint exercise. Okay, connective tissue exercise. And that is why disengagement is so important. It's difficult because we're awake. Inhale, comes out. Exhale, brings you in. Press back through the sit bones. Return to breath. Left hand comes just behind the left hip. Inhale, right arm rises. 
and lift the hips and have a breath here or two. So I was telling Kristen we're going to have a hip opener just because we're all women and we store a lot in our hips typically. So square or fire log is what we're going to practice. So a couple ways to do this. Um, one is you take the left leg, you bring it parallel to the front of the mat. Let's start with flexing our feet to get in it to protect the knees. The right foot can just come right in front of the right knee or maybe your bolster or block brings it up a little bit. Okay. That could be where you want to go today. If you want to bring the leg on top above the knee, so it's not on the knee, it's clearly on top and you're going to have a little bit of an angle here. That's fine too. So just noticing. So this space right here, it could stay or you could find a block probably still even feeling tension even if you put the block on the bolster there. So I don't think you're taking away from the integrity of yin. Now we still have our bolsters, yay. So this might be enough right here to close eyes, relax the shoulders and sink into your sits bones, just like we did in the last couple postures. Or if you'd like to come forward and work your way into a little hole, you can inhale exhale begin to fold forward so you test the waters if it doesn't work for you you can always come back up and sit and then we'll switch legs for the next side lots of breath lots of rooting through Sit bones. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. to relax your feet, disengage feet, shoulders, brow, jaw. Inhale, take the breath to the tension. Exhale, let go of the tension. You might still be here, but take the breath there. Keep releasing.
begins to bend, bringing the left shin parallel to the front of your mat. No, right shin, excuse me, right shin parallel to the front of your mat. And just like you did on the other side, just gauging what's going to be an appropriate depth for you for this posture. So left foot might be in front of your knee. You might take the block and bring it up. Or you might take the foot up and bring it above the knee, flexing the feet and protecting like we did on the other side. And then seeing, okay, now that I'm here, I can let the feet disengage and judge, do I want to fold or sink into my sit bones and stay right here? Either way, you're opening your hips. And if you choose to fold, inhale. We make space with the inhale, we exhale, and we move into the space if the fold is appropriate. Sink into your sits bones. If they're lifting, come out of the fold a little bit.
Ready, slowly inhale, begin to press up, exhale, pause. Take your time. And when you are fully upright, taking your hands again, helping your leg come out in front of you, and lightening your hands to help the other leg as well, integrating through the staff. And we're probably going a little bit over time, just so you know. This place we're going to go is onto our backs. We have a couple things and then we're moving into Shavasana. Just slowly lowering onto your back. And if you'd like, bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a few rolls to either side, even coming down onto the tailbone, letting the knees go a little bit. Letting them fall close to the left, come back through center, let the knees fall close to the right. So little twists, so some supine twists today before you go to bed would be a really nice idea too. Just to add that on them. With your arms maybe in a cactus place. So if you like to keep the heart open in Shavasana, you could, or you could just fly, uh, fly down flat on your back. But if you'd like a little lift through the heart, the option is to bring a rolled up mat, blanket, or bolster underneath the spine. So the bolster comes right to your tailbone. You could bring the soles of your feet together and then lie with your spine on 
the bolster, and then the arms can come out, stretch to either side, and then just take those shoulder blades and bring them down. Inhale, exhale, let go of all the big pranayama, all the big breath work, the noticing of the breath, the controlling of the breath. Involuntary breath will take over, gift. Rest. A call to rest and also command it to rest. But now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you, and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. And I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. As you're ready, roll off of your bolster or blanket into a fetal posture on one side. And here you can gift yourself three big belly breaths in through the nose of the belly, expand and disengage. And out through the mouth, belly comes back in. And 
as you're ready, take the hand on top, press it near your face to a seat, and we can pray and close. And we'll leave space for anyone who wants to pray out loud or other part. Lord, thank you for this time and space. Thank you for the computer so we can be with our other friends. Thank you for holy yoga, Lord, that we can move our bodies, praise you, ponder, meditate your word, your character, who you are, which is so much more important than even what the plan is for each of us in our lives. We know we are called by, by you to do works you set out long ago for us, works that we should be doing, Lord. Give us the courage to do those things, those hard things. And also, Lord, we hear your per permission to rest, especially during this season, that we can confuse Christmas with work. Don't let us confuse that, Lord. Keep us fixed on your son, Jesus. Oh, I pray this for me so deeply, and I know others feel the same way. We just want to keep our gaze fixed on him without having to contrive or control anyone else and what their vision of the season is. Let their vision be theirs. But Lord, let ours be fixed on your son and let it be restful and joyous and let it hope. We lift up the prayers, spoken, unspoken, and the ones that we can't put into words. May your Holy Spirit intercede and bring them to you in the powerful name of Jesus. <laughs> 